So what we see here is a federated building model I've created here in the office. Uh, so we have the architectural plans loaded, uh, which have been created using Archicad, and then we, we have the, ventil the ventilation model loaded, uh, which came from uh, Revit using consultant. Uh, so the first thing I can do is actually take a look at what's in the model. Uh, so I can I can poke around the building model. I can also ask Solibri to visualize certain parts of the models for me. Uh, so for example, I can simply visualize the ventilation plans. Now again, I'm not the ventilation consultant. I don't actually have access to the same piece of software that uh, that has been used to generate this model. However, I can still access all the information that has been included in it. And if I highlight any of the elements, I can access all the information that has been embedded in that element for me. Uh, I can also use uh, Solibri to visualize the uh, uh, this ventilation plan within the building itself. So I can get a good idea of how it's going to be seated into my uh, architectural design here. Uh, this isn't only just uh, for understanding the design. It's a great tool for that too. However, it is a preliminary check too. Because if I have now noticed that there are ducts protruding through the facade in this building, I can immediately flag that up as an issue that will need to be fixed before the design can actually progress into further stages. Uh, however, the true, st the true strength of Solibri lie in the checking process. We can use logical rules to check this model for particular issues. Each one of these rules individually will check for something very simple and very quick, the width of a door, the distance between two elements. However, uh, once we slot these rules together, we can actually check for fairly complex logical expressions. Uh, so if you have a legal requirement uh, to have two fire exits from any space or so any room that has a furnace with a thermal output of above half a million uh, BTUs, I can actually go ahead and check for the space. So I can go ahead and check every space. Is there a furnace in it? Yes, there is. In that case, what is the thermal output of the furnace? Is it above half a million BTUs? It is. Well, how many exits does the space have then? Only one. Oh, this will be an issue. You actually need two. Uh, so we can perform these automated checks uh, on the building model. Um, and uh, and Solibri will come back to us with these answers, highlighting the issues that we might have created in the design process. Uh, so let's actually take a look at some of these uh, issues that we've uh, that Solibri has highlighted for us today. Uh, the first issue here is a fairly common issue that we can have uh, in designing buildings, especially when there's uh, large amounts of uh, HVAC uh, planning going into it. Uh, this is just you know, your traditional clash detection, what Solibri is telling me here is that these ducts here uh, will be colliding with the suspended ceiling uh, that is supposed to be below them. Uh, now, finding this issue in the virtual space is not a particularly large problem. Uh, all I need to do is tell the uh, consultants involved in this issue that this will need to be fixed. So all I need to do is right-click on the issue, and I can add the slide. Uh, so using this uh, slide option, uh, I can add a description of what the issue is. I can also type into the field, so fixed ducts. Uh, but where the true strength with BCF lies is that it knows who it belongs to. So I can use the coordination tab here to add the responsible persons for it. Uh, both the ventilation engineer and the architect will need to work together on this issue for this to be fixed. So I can assign them both. BCF will also keep an audit trail uh, for what has happened so far. Uh, so ne the next time something happens with this issue here, this slide can be updated to contain the changes and see who's done what. The BCF uh, format here also knows which elements belong to the uh, issue. So highlighting any one of these uh, dots here, I can see immediately that it's that particular element that is partaking in this problem. Uh, so clicking OK, I can carry on. Uh, the next check I have here uh, that has come back with an error is more of a design-related issue. What Solibri is telling me here <coughs> is that these spaces have very little windows on them. Uh, now, this was a con con conscious design decision uh, because this is, a this is a security office and a conference room. We don't want people peeking into these on the first floor. 
Uh, so what I need to do is right click on them and mark them as an accepted issue. This is not really a problem. However, on this issue here, what Solibri is telling me that these spaces have too big windows assigned to them. So the glazed area in these rooms are too large. Those of you who are architectural designers will know that there are actually rules about how large your glazed area can be on a room. So this is something that we'll need to send back to the architect for consideration, uh, either to increase uh, to decrease the U value on the windows or to uh, decrease the uh, glazed area. So all I need to do is assign the architect to this issue and click OK to close the slide. Um, the next issue I'm going to highlight here is the clearance about the suspended, uh, uh, above the suspended ceiling here. What Solibri is telling me here is that there is not enough space, according to my own rules, between the underside of the slab and the top of the suspended ceiling below that slab. Now, this isn't a particular issue in the sense that if we go on site like with this design, this can still be built. However, it might slow us down because the contractor's hand is not going to fit in easily between these uh, elements. So Libri is also able to tell me how, uh, what the actual distance is between the elements. So I can see here that I have specified that there should be at least 400 millimeters between uh, the elements. But in reality, there's only 260 millimeters between here. Uh, so this is something I need to consider uh, either during programming or uh, maybe dropping the ceilings a little bit. Uh, if I need to be able to keep up with the program. So again, I can simply send this back uh, uh, to the architect for his consideration. Uh, moving on, uh, I have the escape right analysis here. Uh, what Solibri is telling me here is that these two spaces have no safe means of exit from them. Uh, now in this case, this is not a problem because these are ducts. We don't need to be able to escape from ducts. So I can just dismiss this issue as an accepted issue. Moving on, uh, I the last one I'm going to highlight here is this issue here, where Solibri has found that the columns under the slab here don't actually support the slab above. Uh, now again, this isn't particularly painful to find in the virtual space. However, if you find this out on site, that would be a completely different story. Just imagine, uh, having half your building standing, the precast concrete slab arrives, gets cleaned up, and then it doesn't fit the building. Uh, that is a major issue that would need to be solved on site. However, solving it with clever design or just attentive design uh, is not a particular problem. So again, all I need to do is add the slide, assign the appropriate uh, persons to the issue. Uh, this model doesn't have a structural plan, so I'm just, I'm just be sending this back to the architect. I can click OK uh, to create the slide for this issue. Now that I've created all of these slides, I can use the communication tab here to automatically collate all of these uh, uh, slides into one presentation, which is why they're called slides. So I can get Solibri to automatically uh, uh, build this for me. These are not screenshots, so these are still interactive views of the model. Uh, I can get the information I need about the elements uh, uh, required, and I can uh, look around, get a good understanding of what the issue is. Once I'm happy with all of these issues and I've assigned the appropriate persons, I can use the report function to create one of these BCF report files. To create the BCF report file, all I need to do is save it as a file. I'm just going to very briefly save this on my desktop here, because I can uh, send this file to the designer who's responsible for fixing the issues. If you remember, I said at the start of the presentation that the federated building model should not be edited. That's because if you edit someone else's work, you become liable for it, and you don't want that. So you basically just want to find the issues and tell the person responsible for the issue to go fix it. So if I go over to my uh, preferred uh, authoring tool, uh, I can just use the exact same built-in tools that uh, I always have to uh, Brass for this presentation file that I have just created and sent, well, in this case, to myself. Uh, and then I can just use my, my native or authoring tool to fix the issue. So, for example, if we take a look at the second floor here, I have the column components don't touch. So when I double click on the issue here, uh, my authoring tool has automatically highlighted every single column uh, 
for me. Now, while this might seem like a convenience feature, this is actually a very important tool. Because imag Im imagine the alternative uh, of communicating this issue. I write an email to someone saying that there are a dozen columns on the top floor that are not meeting up with the slab above. Uh, and then I go ahead, select 11 of them, uh, stretch those, but then the phone rings and they forget about the last one. Uh, in which case, I'd need to run another one of these rounds, wasting time and therefore wasting money, uh, fixing an issue that could have easily been fixed uh, with just a single click. Uh, so what I need to do now is fix the issue. Uh, so I'm just going to very quickly do that here. Pick up on the column. Let's stretch the column to meet up with the roof above. And once I've done this, I can actually use my controls here to say that this issue is no longer an issue. I've closed it because it has been fixed. At this point, I can create one of these BCF files again uh, by simply saving those uh, somewhere else and updating the presentation in Solibri uh, to reflect these changes, therefore keeping an edit trail of what has happened so far and, and what the um, workflow has been.